If you're a gun owner in St. Charles, Lincoln, Pike, Montgomery, or Callaway County, you must watch this video on who supports your gun rights before the August 2nd Republican Party primary. Aaron Dorr here, guys, with the Missouri Firearms Coalition. And this video is for gun owners in Senate District number 10. As I said, it's this great big chunk over here up against the eastern edge of Missouri, Pike, Lincoln, Montgomery, Callaway, and portions of St. Charles County. The seat was formerly held by Jeannie Riddle. She's been termed out, uh, creating this open seat primary. And it's, got a, it's a big race. There's five separate candidates who filed in this race. One candidate has largely stopped campaigning. We have four other candidates who are actively vying for this GOP nomination. And so your question to us is always the same thing. It's who's the pro-gun champion? You know, who's going to fight for gun rights? Because we all understand now at a fundamental level that talk is cheap when it comes to campaigns, and it's especially cheap in Republican Party primaries in Missouri. Everyone says they're pro-gun. If you ask them at a forum, all their hands go up, I'm pro-gun. The question you're asking us is, who can we trust? How do we believe these guys? So to answer that question, MOFC has done a very thorough candidate survey program in this race, and we've asked the candidates where they stand in detail on the top 10 issues facing gun owners right now here in Missouri. And we're going to combine the results of that program with their public statements and give you guys this report. Now, oftentimes we have very clear distinctions between candidate A and candidate B. We have a four-way primary in this situation. As you're going to see, the results are somewhat cloudy, but you asked for the report, and we're going to give it to you. We're going to begin with Brian Spencer. Brian Spencer, he's been a state rep for a long time in Jeff City. He's not necessarily uh, notable for anything when it comes to gun rights. And for some reason, Brian Spencer is refusing to fill out his Missouri Firearms Coalition candidate survey. Now, when a candidate won't survey, when they won't put their views in writing, that is a very big red flag for gun owners. Because again, if a candidate won't put their views in writing now when they need help from gun owners, oftentimes that means they're already preparing in their minds to join that rhino club in Jeff City. And they figure, you know what? I might as well not get myself on the record in support of gun rights if I plan to vote against them once I'm in office. So we don't know where Brian Spencer stands when it comes to red flag gun seizures. You know, Congress just passed a massive federal gun control bill in D.C. The main part of that was a funding bill to bribe state legislatures into passing red flag gun seizures. Missouri rhinos will try that in the upcoming session. So we'd like to know if Brian Spencer would vote no, he won't say. We'd like to know if Brian Spencer will vote no on any attempt to weaken SAPA law. Brian Spencer won't answer that question. We also asked him, would you vote to ban AR-15s? Would you vote to raise the age limit on gun owners? Would you vote to take away our 30-round magazines? Brian Spencer won't answer any of these questions. So if you're trying to figure out who the pro-gun candidate is, it's a big danger sign if they won't even tell you their views in writing. You need to ask Brian Spencer, why? Why won't you survey? What are you trying to hide? Why is it so hard to put your views in writing? I get it, you're gonna say you're pro-gun, I want your views in writing. That's the question in your statement to Brian Spencer if you see him at a campaign event between now and election day. That brings up these three. We got Mike Carter, Jeff Porter, and Travis Fitzwater. Now here's the good news. All three candidates surveyed 100% pro-gun with the Missouri Firearms Coalition. You can see all their surveys on our website. You can print them off and keep them in your file so you have their actual statements when it comes to gun rights in your hands. So they're all three equally pro-gun when it comes to survey. Now, Jeff Porter is a recent state rep in Jeff City. Travis has been there for quite some time. They both have a record when it comes to gun rights. They've both voted yes on SAPA law in 2021. I will say neither Jeff or Travis has stood out as a leader in the gun rights movement in Jefferson City. That bears mentioning, but both did vote pro-gun when uh, given the chance to do so in 2021. Mike Carter is a former judge in Wentzville. Carter was a very quick turnaround on his candidate survey, very active or very vocal rather in his support for gun rights and a very quick response again from former Judge Carter when it comes to the Second Amendment. So when we have a situation like this where we have three 
you know, you know, viable candidates who've all surveyed pro-gun, we dig a little bit deeper and try to figure out, you know, whose campaigns are viable, whose campaigns are active, where do these candidates stand. And I will say, all three candidates are very active. All three races appear to be viable. Mike Carter certainly has a lot of support in the district, a lot of support, both financial and energetic support from gun owners right now in this race. But that's the only real distinction between Mike Carter, Jeff Porter, and Travis Fitzwater when it comes to gun rights. Had all four candidates in this race surveyed equally, we would not have given you guys this report because there's no real distinction. But in this case, with Brian Spencer refusing a survey and these three candidates surveying 100% pro-gun, that is a distinction we wanted you guys to know about. So from here, guys, make your own decision on who to vote for, as always, and share our video online so everyone knows where these candidates stand. And join our fight today, folks, at www.joinmofc.com.